So today is the, the last day uh, of our course with Sylvain. And this is uh, my last lecture, so I wanted to profit to thank, uh, first of all, Sylvain for inviting me to share this course with him, which is uh, an honor. And also to thank Stefano, who's not here, but for he, he was an excellent host and, and uh, an excellent organizer. And so now I, I will start. So in the, in the afternoon, I think Sylvain will make kind of a summary of, of what we are doing. But today, what, uh, in the morning, I, I will try to explain something which is related to what we did yesterday, but it's kind of independent also. So uh, you, you can, yeah, hopefully, you can follow without uh, having followed yesterday. So the, the question we pose today, again, in, in, in the context of trying to understand how to decompose the dynamics. So yesterday, we, we tried to look at this dichotomy Either there exists a trapping set, or that F is chain recurrent. Okay, and and the the work we did yesterday was to try to see under which conditions we could improve this uh, recurrence property, okay? So today, we will focus mainly on this other case, which is, uh, which is the rest of the case, and it's, it's not at all well understood. So now, we know we have a, a certain trapping region, U, which send below, and now we, we would like to understand how can we decompose the dynamics. And so, so essentially, uh, the question is how many chain recurrence classes are there? So in the, in the first lecture, Sylvain explained that uh, there are some phenomena uh, that now, nowadays is, is known as Newhouse phenomena, which implies that under, under certain conditions, Uh, one has infinitely many train recurrence classes. In particular, infinitely many sinks. This is one of the important cases. So now we, we are trying to understand if, if we can put some conditions that will forbid this phenomena to appear. And the condition we will try to test is partial hyperbolicity. Okay? So before I enter exactly into this, let me remember this was also an exercise in the, in the first tutorial lesson, is that if F is hyperbolic, then it has finitely many chain recurrence classes. This is sometimes called the spectral decomposition. The 
And let me try to very, very briefly explain the idea of this, because in a certain sense, it is quite very related to the argument we did yesterday to showing that transitive and also diffeomorphisms are robustly transitive. So the idea is that if you have a hyperbolic uh, diffeomorphism, meaning if you don't remember that each chain recurrence class is hyperbolic, then you have to show that there are finitely many chain recurrence classes. And so how will we do, we do this? You will take a sequence. You, you suppose this is not the case. And so you take a sequence of chain recurrence classes, which is converging to a certain set. So let's call these classes. And so these classes are compact set. They will converge to a certain uh, compact set lambda, which will be contained in a chain recurrence class. But so this is a hyperbolic set. So we have lambda here. And so we have, it's a hyperbolic set. So it has a uniform sized stable manifold and a uniform sized and stable manifold, which cover the whole dimension. And so hyperbolicity is something that. Uh, holds in a, in a neighborhood and so as classes CN start to accumulate here you get that the stable manifold of the class will intersect the unstable manifold of lambda and the stable manifold of the class and stable manifold of the class will intersect the stable manifold of lambda. And if you look this closely, this means that you can go from pseudo orbits from here to here and from here to here. And so they are in the same class, showing that this is not possible. OK, so again, the key point is that when you are hyperbolic, the stable and the unstable direction, which is where we have some control on the dynamics, cover the whole dimension of the manifold. And so the, the idea now is try to extend this to the context where you are partially hyperbolic with one dimensional center. So before I, I state the, the, the main problem, let me first mention that this phenomena is very associated what, with homoclinic tangencies, which was explained by Sylvain. And the result by Sylvain uh, Enrique Puchals, Martin Sambarino, and the way young implies that far from tangencies. one has partial hyperbolicity with low dimensional centers. I won't explain precisely what Sylvain did the first day. So essentially what we expect is that far from tangencies, we will be able to show that this phenomena cannot occur. And so the conjecture uh, is by Bonatti. It has many forms, but I, I will state a, a simple version is that for f partially hyperbolic diffeomorphism center dimension 1 uh, or at least for f in an open and dense, see one open and dense subset of partially hyperbolic diffeomorphisms with center dimension one, 
f has finitely many chain recurrence classes. Okay, and so essentially you can change this global, this, this would be globally partially hyperbolic diffeomorphisms with one dimensional center, but as we will be working in neighborhoods of uh, chain recurrence classes, it's no, no problem to assume that, that you are partially hyperbolic in this weaker set, setting that uh, chain recurrence classes are partially hyperbolic. But for the purposes of today, I, I won't matter about the dis distinction and you can assume that you are globally partially hyperbolic with one dimensional center. So the, the difficulties are the same. And so only let me mention that this conjecture is also related to what we know as Pali's conjectures. In particular, there's a conjecture by Pali's that, that uh, tries to describe dynamics far from homoclinic tangents is an, an another kind of bifurcation which are called uh, heterodimensional cycles. And in that case, Pallis claims that the dynamic should be hyperbolic. Okay, and so essentially what, what I will tell today, it's in a certain sense a continuation of a, of a big work that Sylvain did with uh, Enrique Puchals. who studied the case of uh, dynamics far from homoclinic tangencies and heterodimensional cycles. So now, now we will focus on this setting. So let me mention which is the, the result I would like to explain a little bit about. So it's a theorem joined with Sylvain and Martin Sambarino. which says essentially the following, that there is an open C1, open and dense subset of partially hyperbolic diffeomorphisms with one dimensional center such that every F, in, there's an open dense O, F, every F in O, has finitely many quasi-attractors, okay? So essentially we, we are not able to show that there are finitely many chain recurrence classes, but uh, as I explained the other day, they, they are some chain recurrence classes which stand out from the rest because they uh, capture the dynamics of most of the points. Okay? And so we are able to show that there are finitely many such classes. Okay? The other ones, we don't know. But at least these ones, which are the attractors uh, the, that capture most of the dynamics, we know that they cannot uh, accumulate. So before I continue, let me say that this is related to a work by Bonatti, uh, Gan, Li, and Dawei Yang, which studies with, in, in which they show that far away from homoclinic tensions is Quasi-attractors cannot accumulate in a quasi-attractor, okay? So it, it's, it's not so different, but uh, here what we are showing is that you, you have only finitely many quasi-attractors. And of course, what we will try to do is try to reproduce 
this argument, we will take a sequence of quasi-attractons uh, converging to something and try to show that this is impossible. Okay, what Bonatigan, Lee, and Yang did in a more general context, in the general context of far from homoclinic tangencies, they showed that if these quasi-attractors converge somewhere, this cannot be a quasi-attractor. Okay, so I will explain a little bit better. Okay, sorry. Anyway, so let me recall what a quasi-attractor is. Q, let's say them, is a quasi-attractor for F if two things happen. Q is a chain recurrence class. And there exists a basis of neighborhoods, so trapping sets, this meant that they are compactly sent into the interior such that Q equals the intersection of these open sets. Okay. So, in the rest of the lecture, I will try to explain the ideas behind uh, this result. And so, the, the first thing I, I, I want to, to do is try to relate this result to what we were trying to do yesterday. Okay, and so, how, how can we relate these two things? It's because, essentially, quasi-attractors are saturated by unstable manifolds. And so quasi-attractors, and the, the important thing about quasi-attractors is that they contain minimal unstable laminations. Okay, so let me explain that. Let F be a partially hyperbolic diffeomorphism with one dimensional center, and let Q be a quasi attractor for F. Then for every X in Q, we have that the strong and stable manifold of X is contained in Q. Okay? So when uh, Sylvain explained the other day that when you have a partially hyperbolic diffeomorphism, every point has a, an unstable manifold, a manifold which is tangent to the unstable distribution and which is contracted in the past. Okay? So let me explain this result. And let me explain it in the context of, of an example I, I did the other day, which was the example of solenoids. You know, trying to remember what we did the other day. And so essentially, if you have a point x in Q, so you have a sequence of open sets which are trapped inside themselves. So, and take UN containing Q, 
such that f of u n is mapped inside uh, u n. So for every k, okay, this is an open set containing a compact set. There is a uniform distance to the boundary. So at every point in Q, we have a uniform local and stable manifold which is contained in this open set. Okay, and so for every Y in Q, there exists, uh, we have that the local and stable of manifold of Y is contained in UN. And so if you recall uh, Sylvain's lecture the other day, you know that you can recover the whole unstable manifold by iterating this uh, manifold forward. So the unstable manifold of X, which is equal to the nth iterate of the local unstable manifold of F minus N of X, will also be contained in UN, right? Because we have this local unstable manifold is contained in, U, in UN, but UN is sent inside UN. So all forward iterates are contained in UN. And so this belongs to UN. And therefore, since all UNs determine the quasi-attractor, we get that Q is saturated by unstable manifold. OK. Why did this, I did this drawing? Because the other day, in a certain sense, when we explained that here you had sort of a quasi-attractor, the way we did it was like iterating forward and seeing that these sets were like uh, spiraling around this torus. Essentially, now, now that we know about unstable manifolds, what we were trying to say is that this set is saturated by unstable manifolds, and unstable manifolds has to, have to intersect one of, each one of these disks. Okay, and that's, that's what we did the other day without having the, the words to, to say. So what's the trick here is that you have a, what would happen if we have infinitely many uh, quasi-attractors? So suppose one has infinitely many quasi-attractors. QN. So these are compact in, invariant sets, and if they are infinitely many, they should accumulate somewhere. So there should be some accumulation. QN converges to lambda, as in the hyperbolic case. And what is the, the important information we have about quasi-attractors is that they are saturated by unstable manifolds. And since unstable manifolds vary continuously in compact parts, this information extends to the limit. Okay, so important. point, lambda may not be a quasi-attractor but at least it is saturated by unstable manifolds.
And now we are more or less in the setting we were yesterday of trying to understand sets which are saturated by unstable leaves and minimal such sets. So let me make two remarks, which are the main points here. So one, we have that. So let me recall what was a minimal and stable lamination. Uh, minimal WU lamination was is a compact set, say uh, lambda. Saturate, well, lambda used before, so it's called gamma. Saturated, compact, F invariant, saturated by W U U, U leaves and minimal for these requirements. So the two important remarks to go to uh, point to this uh, direction is that each quasi quasi attractor contains a minimal WU lamination. And this is trivial because once you have a compact set which is saturated by unstable manifolds, so as, as we explained yesterday, it's like a Sorn lemma argument tells you that it has a minimal one. At least one. It may have many, but one it has. And the second remark is that if gamma 1 and gamma 2 are minimal WU laminations and the stable manifold of lam lambda 1 of a point x oh, sorry and there exists a point x in lambda 1 such that the stable manifold of x intersects lambda 2 then the two laminations <coughs> coincide why is this they are compact invariant set if they have a point if they they comp uh, if they share a stable manifold this means that they are as, uh, the, their distance has to be zero Okay, they are invariant compact sets. They have a, a positive distance, so if you have a stable manifold that intersects both, they have to be the same. And so, with these two remarks, we will try to perform the same argument in hyperbolic setting to try to show that if you have a sequence of quasi-attractors accumulating somewhere, you will have an intersection of stable manifolds. Okay. So let me first show the difficulty and then try to explain how we deal with this problem. <coughs> so 
<coughs> so what is the, the possible problem that we may uh, have is the following picture, which I drew the other day. So we have here a sequence of points. like this. So we could have something like this, right? All blue, all blue guys are attractors, and they are accumulating to some other quasi-attractors. And here you, you may have infinitely many. So in principle, the fact that we have a center direction where we don't have a control on the size of the stable and unstable manifolds may provide a difficulty to show that each quasi-attractor occupies a uniform amount of space. So what are we going to do? We are going to try and perform a perturbation, as we did yesterday, to get some uh, geometric condition that forces each quasi-attractor to occupy some uniform space in the manifold. So today, I won't expect to give a definition, and so I will only make a drawing. Okay, so we have the lamination. So uh, let me put here transversality, or non joint integrability, say. What we show is that it's a, the same perturbation result we used yesterday, we use it in this context, and it says essentially the following. It says that for an open and dense of, uh, of partially hyperbolic diffeomorphisms with one-dimensional center, each time you have a minimal uh, unstable saturated uh, set, you have the following property. Each time the, the minimal set has an unstable leaf, uh, has two unstable leaves which are connected by some stable manifold. So let me go here. Blue is unstable. Red is stable. We have the property that there is another point in the unstable leaf which does not intersect here. So we have some space in the center direction. OK, and so essentially, to do this uh, more or less correctly, what we uh, prove exactly is that in, an in a minimal unstable lamination of a partially hyperbolic diffeomorphism, which belongs to a certain open and dense subset of uh, this, what you have is if you have two unstable leaves that share a stable manifold, and you can quantify this by making this is more or less a certain distance one, and so if you move here a distance also more or less one, then you have a space here of size more or less delta. Okay, this is uh, more or less, you can quantify uh, this, uh, the, it's done in the nodes. And so the point is that now, as you approach this limit, then you will get some intersection of stable manifolds. Because re recall here that each one of the points in this unstable manifold has a stable manifold. And this makes, uh, let me make another drawing so, so I don't mess up with this one. So I have one stable manifold here, one unstable manifold here is connected to another unstable manifold here. 
And what we know is that if I saturate this one by unstable manifolds, I get like a roof, like here. And if I saturate this one by stable manifolds, I get something like this. Is, can, can you see the picture? I have like two uh, co-dimension one uh, surfaces. Remember that the center dimension is one, which are uh, blocked by the stable manifolds of our, our lamination. So what do we know now is that there cannot be a point here which belongs to another minimal and stable lamination because of this uh, easy remark. So that's, that's the key point. So let me explain a, a little bit how to conclude uh, from this geometric property. What? Sorry? Yeah, this is, uh, as, I, as I said yesterday, yesterday I tried to explain uh, quite unsuccessfully, this uh, perturbation argument. And what I say is that this is very related to accessibility. Accessibility means that you go by stable and stable, stable and stable, and you can reach everywhere. Okay? But accessibility, you can go in the unstable wherever you want. When you have a minimal lamination, you don't have much choice because only the, the stable manifolds that uh, connect points in the unstable uh, are useful. So in a certain sense, which I said yesterday, our perturbation result is an improvement of uh, Dolgopiat-Wilkinson's result of accessibility, but the, the key difficulty is that we have to control the continuations of these sets and make a breaking of integrability everywhere. Okay? So in that sense. Why the, ah, so the, a point can be here, but, but the, <laughs> the key point is this, these two blue lines belong to, to one unstable lamination, say lambda one. What I, what I say is that if you have a, a point here which belongs to another unstable lamination, so it's unstable manifold, has to cross either this roof or this... Uh, other roof, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the word. And so this means that the unstable manifold of this point will intersect the stable manifold of one point of the lamination. And so we can apply this argument to say that they are the same lamination. So each lamination is occupying some uniform amount of space. But there's, there's a difficulty that I hide here which is the, the thing I, I would like to tell you because it's the, the easiest part of the argument, which is we know to, uh, we are able to prove that whenever two points belong to the same stable, they have this uh, non-joint integrability, I call it. Uh, this, they make this drawing. But what happens if your lamination does not have a pair of points connected by a stable manifold. Okay, so. so essentially, what I showed here is that there cannot be infinitely many uh, WU uh, saturated minimal saturated sets gamma N sharing such that 
they have point x different from y in the same w s s leaf. Okay? If this happens, if you have an uh, infinitely many uh, laminations sharing a stable leaf, you can always iterate so that the distance in the stable is more or less one, and you get some uniform space that's occupied by this quasi-attractor. So only finitely many can exist, can uh, appear in the manifold. However, it could be, in principle, that there are so let me say it like this, but what if there exists a sequence gamma n of minimal w u saturated sets such that For every x in gamma n, okay, the intersection of the strong stable manifold of x with gamma n is just the point x. Okay? So this is really a case we have to deal with. But fortunately, we can use the theorem that Sylvain explained the other day, saying that this property of being intersected only once by a strong manifold forces the set to be contained in a surface tangent to the CU direction. Okay, so let me recall that statement. This is done. So, I recall the theorem by Bonatti and Crovisier, which says, it's not, not the one I said yesterday, that says if gamma is partially hyperbolic and the strong stable manifold of X intersected with gamma equals X for every x in gamma, then there exists sigma uh, surface. Surface is not surface. It's the, the dimension e u plus one uh, plus the center tangent to e c, a locally invariant. Tangent to EC plus EU such that sigma uh, gamma is contained in sigma. So the drawing should be something like this. You have the lamination, and you know that each time you throw a stable manifold, it intersects your set only once. And what they are able to prove is that this allows you to construct a surface here, sigma, which contains the lamination. Okay, so the dynamics of the la this lamination lives in a submanifold of dimension EU plus EC. Okay, and so now the problem is you may have an accumulation of these things, of these surfaces, which are getting together, the stable manifolds are missing each other, and so they might, they might not intersect, okay? So we, we could have a sequence of surfaces converging to a surface so that the stable manifolds start to miss each other and they don't intersect. So what we are going to do here is to do 
a kind of weird argument, the, uh, an argument which is different from what we've been doing, to show that if this is the case, then there are at least some points in the, in the lamination which have very big stable manifold in the center direction. Okay? And this will imply that as, as you throw a stable manifold here, it will have to intersect the stable manifold of another one, and you can apply again this argument. So, to finish, let me explain this argument. So, the, the, what I want to show is that proposition uh, given F in partially hyperbolic with center dimension one, there exists delta bigger than zero such that if, uh, say, gamma is a minimal WU U saturated set, then there exists a point Y in gamma whose stable manifold has size delta in the center direction. So essentially what it says is that we can apply the argument of hyperbolic sets because now if we, we have the strong stable direction where the manifold has a uniform size and if in the center direction we have points where the stable manifold is big, now we, we complete the whole dimension and we don't have the problem of not knowing the dynamics along the center. And so how, how do we prove this? This is proven in two steps. The first step is to show that any, that there exists, say, epsilon bigger than zero, such that, or let's, let's call it H, a uniform constant H, such that, such that any W, U saturated set has entropy larger than H. Okay, this, this argument does not use the fact that lambda is contained in a surface. It just uses that, uh, <coughs> that the set is saturated by unstable manifolds. Okay? So, the proof of this is, is very simple. It's related with uh, the inequalities one knows about entropy uh, and what are called Lyapunov exponents. So, uh, the proof is the following. So, in the unstable direction, we are expanding by a certain amount, by a certain factor, say, two. Okay? Each time we iterate a, an unstable manifold, we get the double of size. But the set is saturated by unstable manifold. So if we take a small arc in the unstable manifold, we iterate once, and we can choose here two points which get separated in one iterate. But now inside each one of these, we iterate again, and we have four of such arcs. And so we have here four points which are uh, epsilon n separated, like in the definition of entropy. And as we continue to do this, you may say, oh, okay, but this unstable manifold is getting back together. But before it comes back together, it has to, to separate somewhere. And so we get an exponential growth, a uniform exponential growth of uh, different orbits, given this estimate on the entropy. 
And now, the final argument is to use the fact that we are contained in a surface to try to do the, the inverse argument. Okay? This is called uh, Ruel's inequality. Okay? That's, I think that's called Ruel inequality, which says that uh, for a given invariant measure, I, I, I haven't spoke so much about this, but the entropy of the measure is smaller or equal than the integral of the unstable Lyapunov exponent or something like that. Okay, in a certain sense, what this says is that if you have a certain amount of entropy, you need at least the same amount of expansion. Okay? But now, lambda is contained in a surface tangent to EU plus EC. Okay, so the, the expansion, we are seeing it here. We used it, we used the expansion here to see that lambda had some uh, uniform entropy. But now, if we use that lambda is contained in the surface and we apply the same argument, this argument to the inverse of f, okay? So for f minus one, one has to see expansion in the EC direction. Okay? You apply this to F minus one, you have that gamma is contained in a surface here, so the expansion cannot appear in the unstable manifold because for, for the inverse it's contracting, and so it has to appear here in the center direction. And this is exa exactly what we want. We want some points which are contracting for F in the center direction. Okay? More or less. And so this was what I wanted to say. Thank you.